Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world, the BMW Z3, or as the folks in Castletown call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and if you know me and you've watched this channel before, you know that I'm extremely biased towards the Z3. It's a great car, and I'm not saying that if you don't own one already that you're a loser, but it would make you much more winterly if you went ahead and bought one. Now, for those of us who have one already, which is probably most of you watching, you know that although it's a great car, it's not a perfect car. So today we're gonna go over the top 10 problems with the BMW Z3. But before we get to that, we have three Zeds of the week. And first up, we have Mike and Lauren with their 2.3 liter five-speed Roadster with 123,000 miles. Now this was a recent purchase at a great price. It has a cold air intake, upgraded amplifier and speakers. Otherwise, it's pretty much stock. Mike is very proud of the fact that his wife Lauren can drive a manual so she can share in the fun as well. That's awesome. Next up, we have Megan and Eduardo. We have a lot of couples this week with their 1998 1 1.9 liter five-speed Roadster with 168,000 miles. They are 20 year owners of this car, very cool. Recent work they've done is new top, new tires, seat bushings, all the vacuum hoses, the head gasket, coolant lines, rear pads, they've done the glove box fix, a new antenna grommet, all the badges, a new starter, shocks and struts, and a shift knob. That's great, a lot of work there. And last but not least, we have Chuck from Fort Worth, Texas with his 1999 Z3M Roadster that he bought in February with 91,000 miles and the S52 engine. Now Chuck's done the glove box repair, the seat bushings, and the handle gaskets. He also has an upgraded cup holder from a company in New Zealand and we'll talk about that more in a moment. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing your beautiful cars. If you'd like to see your car on Zed of the Week, please follow the easy instructions in the description below. Now on with those problems. And at number 10, we have the plastic rear window. Now, many convertibles back in the day had plastic rear windows, and they all share the same problems. As they age, they yellow, they get stained, they get rub marks, uh, they get hazy, they dry up, they crack. And they can be replaced and they can be reconditioned uh, even as they get older. But at the end of the day, they're always going to be plastic. Speaking of plastic, at number nine, the cheap plastic dead pedal. As you can see, mine's cracked. But really, number nine is about the uh, overall kind of chintzy plastic that BMW unfortunately used in our cars, which tends to have issues. Uh, and kind of wish they had done more, but that cracked dead pedal is just kind of a symptom of cheap plastic used throughout the interior, which is number nine. And at number eight, we have the seatbelt guides made out of, guess what? Plastic seems to be a recurring theme in this video. Now what these one piece plastic parts tend to do is they tend to break in the middle back, the part that's up against the leather. Now the only way to truly fix this is to replace them and to do that you have to remove the upholstery from the back of the seat to gain access to the bolts that hold them on. There's other temporary fixes. I did a video on that so check that out if you get a chance. But at number eight, the plastic seat belt guides. And at number seven, we have poorly placed cup holders. Now I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but you kind of have to be a contortionist, uh, and I'm not as flexible as I used to be, to reach these cups in the position they're in. Now I know there's different kinds of cup holders out there, but many of us have one like mine. Uh, there are solutions. Uh, in today's one of today's Zeds of the week from Chuck, the red Z3M Roadster, uh, he bought one from a company in New Zealand that fits in this compartment. You just remove this lid and then it's a 3D printed uh, apparatus that puts your cup holders out here. Pretty smart, makes it a little easier. Or uh, I saw on walmart.com where there's a SpongeBob SquarePants square cup 
for coffee that I think might fit in here. So maybe that's a solution for you. But number seven, poorly placed cup holders. And at number six, we have worn seat bushings. Now, this isn't just a minor annoyance. It's kind of a minor safety issue as well. But those of us who have had it, which is probably most of us know that it's a kind of an unsettling feeling when you stop and your seat keeps going without you. Uh, but it's fairly easy to solve and fairly inexpensive as well. Again, I have a video on it. So do other people. And if you're semi-mechanical like me, it's not all that difficult to fix. At number six, seat bushings. At number five, we have the stereo. Now, there's not that much wrong with the head unit especially if you like 90s retro styling, but probably the biggest problem is the speakers, and people love to upgrade those for good reason, and one of the main reasons is the subwoofer, which seems to always crack like mine is. I will be getting to that soon. Related to that, the antenna grommet, which I've been told is a actually a difficult fix, and luckily mine's perfect and I haven't had to do it yet, but when I do, I will make a video. And at number four, we have what might be the most famous problem with the BMW Z3, and that is the sagging glove box. Now, for those of you who have fixed it already, you know that sometimes it's just as simple as taking out the heavy metal crash plate from the box door itself. Even better if you went ahead and put in the reinforcement. And I've done a couple videos about this. And again, many of us have done this. And it's a famous problem on the Z3. And really, only Z3s made here in the States due to the weight of the glove box door. Number four, the sagging glove box. And at number three, we have leaking A-pillars. Now, if you have this problem, you'll know it if you're driving in the rain with the top up and you still get water on the inside. It's a very simple fix. Again, I've done a couple videos on it because I kind of screwed up the first one, but it's not all that difficult. And you'll know it even if it's not raining because you can see light coming between the roof seal and the A-pillar. There's also other gaps between the multi-part roof seal that can happen, and they have similar solutions. But at number three, leaking A-pillars. At number two is the Disa valve, which is right there. Now, we've moved from annoying and kind of a pain in the butt to dangerous for the vehicle. So the Disa valve allows for a change of length of the intake runner to give you more horsepower at high speeds, more torque at low speeds. And to do that, uh, there is a diaphragm involved which gives way eventually it's rubber and, and it wears out attached to that is a metal piece now if the diaphragm gives out bad enough the metal piece can get sucked into your intake which could grenade your engine or at best damage one valve but it's going to be a real pain so at number two the disa valve and by the way if you're a 1.9 owner like me uh these don't come in uh, cheap uh, China-made knockoff versions. You have to buy the OEM one for $500 or rebuild it yourself. And the number one problem with the BMW Z3, drum roll please, is cheap plastic cooling parts. And we'll start with the coolant reservoir, which can crack and leak. That's right there. Moving on to the plastic fan, which is going to be difficult to show, but uh, link in the description, a video from Cool Cat Terry about the problem she had with her cheap plastic fan disintegrating on her. So check that out. And of course, most importantly, the water pump, which is going to be hard to show as I pass the uh, plastic connections for the radiator hoses uh, that as well can go on you but down there is of course the plastic water pump which or well it's a plastic impeller the whole thing's not plastic but the impeller's plastic and if that disintegrates it can grenade your engine so if you think you still have the plastic impeller water pump might be a good time to get rid of it so folks there you have it none of those problems are really all that major except maybe the water pump and I would say lack of major problems is one of the things, one of the many things that makes our cars so great. 
Hey, if you found this content valuable or at least entertaining, please crush that like button as always. And until next time, remember, friends don't let friends drive boring.